you have protons uh, or space time as a proton or as a nucleus of an atom spinning. And that spinning uh, is, you know, at the, at the exact, um, at the exact equator, it's spinning at the speed of light. So at the exact equator, it's shearing space time on each one of those protons. But every position above and below the equator, there is a slight reduction of speed that's going on, just like you have on a planet. You know, it's moving fastest at the equator of spin, and it's moving slower as you move towards the poles. And that reduction of speed as you move towards the poles is creating some drag. And that drag on the surrounding space-time is causing the surrounding space-time to move along with that proton. And as the surrounding space-time moves, you, you have a field that's basically orbiting around with charge that we call the electron field. So you could say the same thing is happening at the solar system level, except you have a spinning energy ball that's the sun. Um, and space-time around that black hole in the center of the sun, just like around the black hole in the center of the proton, you have a field of space-time that's moving. And in that field of space-time that's moving, you have matter that's aggregated together and, and coalesced into planets. And we look at the different planet nodes you know, as the accumulation of the gases and the minerals and the you know, all of the atomic dense structures that, that aggregated together at that harmonic layer of the space-time fields spin around the center of the sun. So, so if you look at it from the level of space-time moving, as space-time is moving around the black hole that was already there, as Nissan likes to say, it was already there, <laughs> and space-time was the thing that was moving, and then you see the thing moving with space-time. Um, so we, we see space-time moving, and then stuff is basically accumulating in that movement of space-time and aggregating towards its own central vorticity points, so to speak. Um, so there is a lot of similarity when you look at it from that, that level. What I might point out is where you have dissimilarity. Okay. Do it. Uh, yes. and, and, and you know, um, I, I think it's I important uh, to to look, exa look at these as well because uh, it, I think it, it actually engenders a better, clearer picture of how the universe is organized across magnitude of scale. Uh, so, uh, one of the uh, key differences. Uh, so. Uh, why can't you just say that uh, the atom is like the solar system? Uh, I mean, maybe it is like a little tiny solar system. Well, one of the problems with that is that uh, planets around a star can take any orbit they want. Um, th that's kind of a weird way to put it, like as if they choose which orbit they want to be in. They can be in any orbit. Uh, depending mm -hmm. on what circumstances have got them into that orbit. A key difference is that around an atom, the so-called electron uh, cannot be in any orbit around mm -hmm. the nucleus. Uh, mm -hmm. It has very specific quantized orbitals. Uh, and, and so even as the uh, electron so-called electron, uh, moves from these orbitals, it'll jump directly from uh, sp1 to sp2, emit a photon and jump back down to sp1. Mm -hmm. There's no, there, there's no uh, gradient in between, at least as far as uh, what is observed by the dynamics. But isn't no. that the same as like the planet is in an orbit here and there's a planet in an orbit there and there's a gap between them? I mean, isn't that kind of similar? But, uh, you, you know, it, it, it's similar, uh, except that um, the, there, there's nothing about the orbital motion of, of the planets around a star that would necessitate them to be in a specific, like, relationship right so like uh, th there's not a standard 
distance, let's say, between one planet and another in the orbital around the star, uh, it can be any any uh, uh, orbital, really. Uh, so, so, you know, that's like when we look at, like, uh, the TRAPPIST-7 system, uh, mm -hmm. you've got, like, seven planets, all of them about Earth size and, like, four of them in the habitable zone. But they're all, like, in the same orbit as, like, uh, uh, inside, like, uh, like around Mercury, mm -hmm. Mercury's uh, orbital radius, you know. So, right. so they're, they're um, because it's a red dwarf star, they're a lot closer. Uh, yeah. You know, so... Uh, I mean, if you were to look out and see that every star, insofar as you can measure, has planets that have to be at specific orbitals, mm -hmm. then that would be a lot like what you see with the atom. But, hmm. um, and you, you don't think there's any correlation? I mean, I, I'm curious. This is, this is a fascinating one for me, too, to just kind of play with you on a little bit. Um, <laughs> is that, like, there's that there's a correlation between say the size of the star or the density of the star's heat, uh, you know, like the density of the star, the size of the star, the age of the star, that any of those things have a specific correlation to the planet where the planet's orbitals are. Cause do you, do you think that there is a correlation there at yeah, all? And I think that that's a great point, uh, because, um, it actually, uh, I think uh, begins to point us in the direction of where uh, there is still a unified description from the atomic scale to the, the macro scale, the astronomical scale. Uh, because let's say now that you have an extremely high energy system star, let's say yeah. a, a yeah. neutron star, pulsar, black hole. Now, uh, will because of the energy dynamics around that, will a planet be able to take any orbit at once? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. You know, because the, the energy is so much higher, you know, like the frequency is so much higher, it restricts uh, the, 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 the possibilities that are allowed, even at this macroscopic scale. Uh, now, now, I mean, uh, imagine as well, if you had like uh, uh, three black holes orbiting each other, uh, right. you would have very specific orbitals. Right. Like what you see with, with the quantum structure of, of atoms. And so I think that the atoms are uh, just high energy, high frequency systems. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the, the allowed orbitals are restricted, the allowed configurations are restricted because of the extremely high energy interaction yeah. occurring at that scale. Yeah, and, and, you know, you can totally see that, you know, there's a differentiation, obviously, in the space that you're, you're at that scale, you're much closer to the Planck scale. And so the, the specific geometric uh, relationships that are going on in the fabric of space itself, the tetrahedral structure in equilibrium, the pentagonal structure in curvature, the, the forces of, of the immense, immense forces uh, that it takes to hold a proton together, you know, as the proton is spinning at the speed of light, shearing the fabric of space. I mean, this is high energy physics going on. And so there's a much more like intense force of fields and layers that's going to hold space time to a very specific construct in that. Whereas, you know, at the scale of a solar system, you may have a super high energy star, but you've also still got like lots of Planck space and mm -hmm. lots of, you know, larger material dust that's collapsed to make a planet. You know, you've got a lot more wiggle room, I guess you could say, you know, um, and, and that, that wiggle room, I think really makes the big distinction. But I, I do think that the same kinds of patterns from, from what happens in an atom are the same kinds of patterns that give us, you know, a solar system, um, that there is a, a fractal correlation going on there. Um, <clears throat> it's just that one is more precise than the other. You, yeah. hey, you um, know, uh, I'll just have to add that 
I mean, as you get closer to the Planck scale, like you do as, as you're going into the atom, I mean, yeah. at that scale, the, the energy dynamics are such that it probably adopts a, a veritable a crystalline lattice structure, a, a superfluid right. liquid crystalline uh, configuration. So things are, the geometries are extremely specific. Right. What right. Once you get to that Planck scale. And one other point is that, uh, you, you know, in equating the electron and the proton uh, with larger macroscopic dynamics, uh, what would be more appropriate, perhaps, is that if you looked at just the star uh, and that it has a black hole at the center uh, and its ergosphere, its region around it, is like the electron orbital, uh, and, you know, that's what we see is the, the, the energetic uh, surface of the sun. Uh, so uh, if you were to look at perhaps, you know, just a star, just a planet, you would see perhaps uh, uh, the same ratios, uh, the same harmonic relationships you see at the atomic scale at that scale as well.